If you have been experiencing major yield losses in corn as a result of stink bugs, the best way to address the issue is to become more knowledgeable of it. This video, Stink Bugs in Corn, will provide information on the basic life cycle of stink bugs in general. Also, information specifically for brown stink bugs, which is the major stink bug pest of corn, will be shared such as life cycle, types of damage to corn, where they can be a problem, scouting techniques, thresholds, and insecticide recommendations. This video is one of a three-part series. The other two videos are stink bugs, why the concern and getting to know them, and stink bugs in soybeans. At the conclusion of the video is a link that will take you to the other videos about stink bugs, as well as on other field crop topics. This is Al Wood, field crops agent for the Pastink County Center of the North Carolina Cooperative Extension Service. In early July of 2015, I received a call about unusual ears in a grower's field corn. After looking at this as well as other growers' corn, talking with other agents and extension specialists, it became obvious we had a full-blown case of stink bug damage in the region. During that time, I recalled that this insect had been a problem for a number of years south of the Albemarle Sound. Since then, this agronomically important pest has become something that we have had to deal with in Northeast North Carolina, other parts of the state, and the United States in an ongoing basis. During the 2020 winter producer meeting season, Dr. Dominic Rasig, field crop entomologist at North Carolina State University, as a part of his presentations, conducted a survey pertaining to stink bugs. The survey included 13 counties with a total of 241 people completing it. The first of three questions was, did you treat for stink bugs in corn during 2019? Of the 241 respondents, 44% said yes, they did treat, and 56% did not treat for stink bugs, as you see from the chart. The second question was, if you did treat, what percentage of your acreage did you treat? Of the 241 respondents, 42% treated from 90 to 100% of their acreage, whereas 21% treated from 0 to 10% of their acreage. The third question, how much did you spend on scouting and cost of control, plus your estimate of yield loss to stink bugs? 46% of the growers had costs ranging between 10 to 30 plus dollars per acre as a result of stink bugs. Although the results of the survey only represents a portion of the counties and or growers in North Carolina, it does give us an idea of how widespread a problem stink bugs are and the economic costs they are to growers. In the remainder of this video, I will be sharing various information on stink bugs that will help you in managing stink bugs in corn. Stink bugs of the temperate region generally overwinter as adults in protected areas such as ditch banks, fence rows, underboards and dead weeds, ground cover, stones, and under the bark of trees. The winter is passed in a physiological state called, called diapause, a type of hibernation. They become active during the first warm days of spring when temperatures rise above 70 degrees Fahrenheit. In North Carolina, stink bugs develop as much or more on cultivated crops than wild host plants for the first generation as compared to some parts of the United States. Females lay barrel-shaped eggs in clusters on plant tissues such as the undersides of leaves. After egg hatch, stink bugs develop through five instars prior to becoming adults. Approximately four to five weeks are required from hatching to adult emergence. There are two generations of stink bugs per year. Adults are strong flyers and will readily move between weeds and other alternate hosts. Stink bug adults and nymphs, except for first instars, actively feed on plant tissues. The first instars are generally considered a non-feeding stage and metabolize internal nutrient reserves. 
the adults and fifth fin stars often cause more injury than the earlier stages. The brown stink bug is a serious pest along with a number of other common stink bug species in most seed, grain, nut, and fruit crops in the southern United States. As with all stink bugs, the eggs are barrel shaped. For brown stink bugs, the eggs are yellowish translucent, but their colors start turning towards a light pink before hatching. The nymphs develop through five end stars that require about 29 days for development. They resemble adults but are smaller and oval and usually pale green in color. Adult brown stink bugs are long, shield-shaped insects, grayish-yellow with dark punctures on their back and piercing, sucking mouthparts. The fourth and fifth antennal segments are darker in color. The ventral or bottom surface usually has a pinkish tinge. The body length is about a half an inch for adults. Other stink bugs that you may see in North Carolina that look similar to the brown stink bug are brown marmorated stink bug, spine soldier bug, and rice stink bug. In the top left corner of this slide is a brown stink bug. As you look at these lookalikes, details about them will help you distinguish them from brown stink bugs. In the top right corner of this slide is a picture pointing out major distinguishing characteristics of the brown marmorated stink bug, such as with the antennae, shoulder, and abdomen. In the bottom left corner of the slide is an image comparing traits of the spine soldier bug and brown marmorated stink bug. The shoulders are pointed with the soldier bug, unlike the brown marmorated stink bug, which are rounded. In the bottom right corner is an image with both the rice stink bug and the brown stink bug. The adult rice stink bug measures 4 tenth inches to 5 tenth inches long. It has a narrow profile that forms the shield shape characteristic of other stink bugs. These true bugs are typically straw colored with sharp points on the apex of the shield and a yellow triangle exhibited on center of the shield. Some adults have gray coloring near the yellow triangle, while others may be a darker brown rather than straw colored. However, the rice stink bug is e easily distinguished from other stink bugs because of its narrower profile and lighter color than, for example, the brown stink bug. The brown stink bug is the primary pest of corn in North Carolina. Although brown marmorated stink bug, green stink bug, and southern st green stink bug can also be pests. They feed through their piercing, sucking mouthparts and can cause three distinct types of damage. For early vegetative stages as seen in this slide, which is growth stages V1 to V6, the plants can be stunted, yield robbing tillers can be formed, or plants can be killed. This damage can easily be confused with billbug damage. Notice the stink bug positioned at the soil line to probe the plant with its beak. If it feeds on the growing port, it can cause tillers or kill the plant. With the pre-tasseling stage shown here, which is growth stages V14 to VT, ears can be crooked, which are also called banana ears, as well as kernels can be missing. This damage can easily be confused with damage from moisture or nutrient stress. These are additional images of developing ears of corn at the growth stages just prior to or at VT. On the left is an ear of corn emerging from behind the ear leaf. It is at this time that it is most susceptible to damage by the stink bug inserting its beak and feeding on it. On the right is a young ear, which is about the size of that found on salad bars. These images are other examples of stink bug feeding. On the left is the leaf sheath, which is the portion of the leaf that clasps to the stalk. It has been removed from the plant and flattened to show the inside, which is next to the ear and stalk. Inside the red circle are dark green spots showing where the stink bugs has inserted its beak. On the right in the red circle are the same 
type marks where stink bugs have probed the stalk. In the images on the right for the reproductive stages R1 to R2, the kernel size and weight can be reduced and secondary pathogens can be introduced by the stink bug inserting its beak into individual kernels that lead to aflatoxin or fumonisin contamination. So where can stink bugs be a problem? The first situation is corn planted in no-till fields with heavy cover. Watch for feeding in open seed furrows. As seen in this picture, this situation provides ample cover. As soon as the corn emerges, the stink bugs can feed on the young developing corn plants. The second situation is wheat-corn interfaces. Stink bugs aren't a pest of wheat, but will feed on wheat up to the time of harvest. Wheat harvest can push stink bugs into nearby corn, but this isn't a guarantee. Scouting corn about a week after harvest to see if they have moved from the wheat to the corn would be good, although additional scouting may be necessary. The third situation is cornfields planted behind soybeans. Stink bugs build up in soybeans during the late summer and early fall after other crops are harvested. Check field edges near woods where stink bugs may be, have overwintered after building up in last year's soybeans. Other situations to watch for are weedy pastures and other areas with ample vegetation that provide host plants and overwintering sites. This image is of a wooded area next to a field. When scouting for stink bugs, there are three things to remember. They are stealth, type of sampling tool, and ways to improve your chances of observing stink bugs. When looking for stink bugs in corn, I liken it to squirrel hunting. If you have ever walked through the woods looking for squirrels in the trees or looking for one you have flushed by shaking a tree covered with vines, the squirrel will always position itself on the opposite side of the tree from the hunter. Stink bugs will do the same. As you are examining corn plants, remember to use stealth and look for them on the opposite side of the plant as well as in hiding places such as the juncture of the leaf and stalk or partially stuck in the soil at the base of the plant. The only tool you use in scouting for stink bugs in corn is your eyes and a clear mind to keep count of the number of stink bugs observed. The only other point is that there is no indication that the differences in time of day or cloudy versus clear skies improves your chances for observing stink bugs. Just remember to look closely at each plant. Scout corn for stink bugs from V1 through R2. Check all field edges first, especially sources like woods, weeds, and other crops, since they concentrate towards edges and not field middles. The number of sampling stops will depend on the number of stink bugs present and field size. At each sampling stop, check at least 10 corn plants. Sampling the entire plant is not necessary. One other point to remember is that you have to have an understanding of corn growth stages. The link shown here provides very good descriptions of corn growth stages. From growth stages V1 to V6, scout the base of the plant below the lowest green leaf. Look closely because they could even be partly burred in the soil head first as seen in this image. From V14 to VT, find where the primary ear is located and if not yet emerged from behind the ear leaf, peel back the leaf to find where it is forming. In this slide on the left is an immature ear just emerging from behind the ear leaf, as well as on the right is a more immature ear that had to be found by peeling away the ear leaf. Examine the part of the stalk adjacent to the first leaf above and the first leaf below the primary ear, as well as all the plant in between. In this image, the pink portion of the plant is to be examined at V14 to VT. From R1 to R2, as seen in the images here, examine the part of the stalk adjacent to the first leaf above and two leaves below the primary ear, 
as well as all the plant in between. In this image, the pink portion of the plant is to be examined at R1 to R2. As seen here, thresholds vary depending on growth stages and are based on a 100 plant sample as described in this table. These thresholds are not percentages, but numbers. If a single plant has multiple stink bugs, this must be counted into the total. If the number of stink bugs is equal to or exceeds the number in the treat category, treat the field even if 100 plants have not been sampled. If the number falls between treat and do not treat category, take more samples until a confident decision can be made. To better understand the process, let's use the following scenario. We are in a field at V14 to VT growth stages. The section of the plant we are going to be examining for stink bugs is the part of the stalk adjacent to the first leaf above and the first leaf below the primary ear as well as all the plant in between. If the primary ears have not emerged from behind the ear leaf, you may have to locate it by pulling down the ear leaf to find it. The picture on the left shows the tip of the developing ear emerging from behind the ear leaf. There could actually be more than one developing ear on a plant, but we want to be scouting the area around the primary ear, and you can determine that by locating the largest developing ear on the plant. We will be concentrating on the areas of the field that are adjacent to the field edges and not just the outer two or three rows. A few of the samples can be taken further into the field. At each stop, we will be sampling 10 plants and counting all the brown stink bugs we see in the part of the plant targeted. If we were to sample 100 plants and found four or less, then you would not treat. If you get as many or more stink bugs shown in the treat column, whether you have or have not sampled 100 plants, treat the field. If the number falls between the treat and do not treat category, take more samples until a confident decision can be made. One other point about scouting. I have seen people discover at harvest time that they had significant reduction in yield as a result of stink bug feeding. They would say, quote, I scouted my corn during the vulnerable stages for stink bugs, found them to be enough, and did treat, unquote. But the thing was that they did not do was to continue to scout during the vulnerable growth stages of development, V14 to VT, as well as R1 to R2. The corn became infested one or more times with stink bugs, causing major damage. In the areas where stink bugs are severe, I have seen multiple infestations of stink bugs. An alternative approach is to sample the entire plant using the same sample size, 10 plants, and 10 samples per field, as when sampling a targeted area of the plant. These thresholds are number of stink bugs per a certain number of plants as seen in the table. Many insecticides in the pyrethroid class are effective for brown stink bugs in corn. However, bifenthrin is the most effective both because it can be applied at a rate that contains more active ingredient than other pyrethroids and because it is more toxic to brown stink bugs. Expect only a seven-day residual. There are two critical factors to achieve control. The first is coverage. It is critical to deliver insecticide where the stink bugs is lo are located as seen in these images. Ensure canopy penetration with proper nozzle, pressure, and volume selection. The second critical factor is timing. The most critical time to treat is from V14 to VT, which is just before the primary ear is exposed. Aim to control stink bugs when the primary ear is between these stages as you see in these images, but preferably on the early side to avoid banana ears. There is a wealth of information out there about stink bugs, and a very good publication is the Field Guide to Stink Bugs. 
The link shown will provide you with information on how to obtain a copy. Dr. Dominic has recently published a revised version of the fact sheet, Brown Steak Bug Management in Corn. All of the information in this video on scouting, thresholds, and insecticide control were taken from it. On the screen is a link to that publication. To see the other stink bug videos referred to at the beginning of this video or other videos addressing topics of field crops, including crop management, pest management, etc., use the link shown on the screen to go to the Fast Tank CES YouTube channel. Also, you can contact your local extension center with a North Carolina Cooperative Extension Service if you have questions about stink bugs in field corn or any other crop, as well as gardens. For those people that live in Pastain County, contact me, Al Wood, by calling the number on the screen.